Hi, I'm Peter Woolley from Fairleigh Dickinson University at the School of Public and Global Affairs. I'm delighted to welcome you here. Our school runs a number of graduate programs in public administration, administrative science, student services, homeland security, and global affairs. And I'm here to introduce Dr. Paulette Laubisch, who is going to be the moderator of this session about getting a little more education and how that might benefit you. Uh, Dr. Paula Laubisch was herself a, a public servant, an administrator for the state of New Jersey for uh, an entire career, 30 years. And when she retired, she had picked up a number of degrees along the way, including a PhD. And she came to invest her intellectual capital and her long experience in FDU and in our students. Dr. Laubisch. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, all of you who are watching this, and also our great panel. I had the privilege of working with them last year, and they came back for an encore today. So, welcome panel. Uh, I'd like to do a short introduction, but let each of our panelists introduce themselves, uh, telling us something about how they got to where they are, uh, education, training, and uh, anything that they feel is important. So our first, uh, th these are in alphabetical order, by the way. Our first panelist is Kevin McMillan, who is uh, a member of the uh, Newark, uh, I'm sorry, Neptune Township Committee, and he's been doing that for 18 years. Yes. So, Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you very much. Uh, grew up in the Bronx, New York. Uh, was able to get to New Jersey by way of JCPNL, Jersey Central Power and Light. I stayed there approximately 12 years in customer accounting. Then I worked for the Boys and Girls Club for three years. And then the past 20 years, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry. Presently, I work for Santa Fe in the diabetes division. As you alluded to before, I was on the Neptune Township Committee for 18 years. And I have a master's from FDU, and I'm proud of that. And I was just prouder to give back as an adjunct faculty member for the past uh, six years in public administration. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, the next person on our panel is William Pat Schuber, who uh, also is from uh, Fairleigh Dickinson and has had a long career in government. So, Pat, can you give us a little bit about your background and education? Yes, Paula, thank you very much, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this is my 21st year at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm a proud member of the faculty teaching uh, in uh, law, leadership, uh, and programs in public administration in the School of Public and Global Affairs. Um, but in my uh, public service background, um, I am I have served as a, a councilman and a mayor of the borough of Bogota, uh, where I grew up. Uh, served five terms in the General Assembly, as an assembly person uh, in District 38, Central Bergen County. And I've uh, served uh, three terms as the county executive of Bergen County. Um, and um, my graduate, by way of background, education-wise, I'm a graduate of Fordham University and Fordham University of the School of Law. Practice law uh, for over 30 years, both in civil practice as well as representing municipalities. And during the course of my my experience, I've I've worked with so many different public employees at all three levels of government, from state, county to municipalities. I have a great deal of respect for all those who dedicate their lives for service. And, the, and emphasize in my talk today the importance of coming back for education to brush up on those skills to continue that great service that all do. Thank you, Pat. And our last, just alphabetically, is Shavanda Sumter, who is a representative assemblywoman from the 35th district. So, Shavanda, Thank can you, you give us some information? Certainly, and thank you for uh, that introduction. So I'm from the 35th District, which includes both Passaic and Bergen Counties. I've been in office since 2012. Patterson is hometown for me. I'm an alumni of FDU, the Master's in Business Administration and Concentration in Health Systems Management. I've worked in healthcare for over 20 years in management and leadership positions. Uh, with the impact of COVID-19, uh, while it has turned our world upside down, it really has allowed us to move into the age of technology. Uh, so making sure that your credentials are updated, use of technology platforms uh, in healthcare, we moved to telehealth, uh, which has seen remarkable results. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but I can't emphasize the value of continued education and training and learning, especially in these times. Thank you. Well, thank you. 
So my first question, and we'll start with Kevin, is how do you see yourself mentoring or growing your employees? I know it's difficult in this COVID environment, but in general, do you want to give us some? Yeah, I think the first thing you have to do is be empathetic to their needs and to meet them where they are. As you know, many of our employees are faced with a lot of different challenges, so I try to help them be their best. And one of the things, in order to help them be their best, I have to be my best, too. So I start out my day with a two-mile walk or run, and then that way I'm able to give them my best. But it's just being empathetic to them and just uh, listening to their needs and helping them to be the best uh, people that they can be. Pat, can you give us some information on this? Yeah, I think the important part is setting the example. Um, and if you want to expect that your public employees are going to do their best, as I know they do, then you need to set that example, too, from that perspective. I know that in my public service, what I always tried to do was make myself available um, to my employees, as, as well as the public, obviously. But for the employees, I think it was very, very important to, to have their back, uh, to support them in so many different ways. And, and one of those ways is, 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 is making sure that they had the opportunity to increase their skills and making sure that we had the opportunity for in-house training uh, to brush up on those professional skills that are so important for the public sector in particular. Um, and I can say that Fairleigh Dickens University prides itself in doing that, going back into the workplace and providing those types of skills. And I think it's very, very important for us in a time of rapid change at all sectors that we continue to, to master our skills to be able to provide the be those best services we can to the public as the public expects us to do. And I think a great way to do that is not only encouraging in-house training and the opportunities for that, but for also encouraging it from a leadership perspective in-house, but also encouraging them to take up their education further in a, in a school like the Fairleigh Dickinson School of Public and Global Affairs. Thank you. Shavonda. So again, I agree with uh, all of what has just been said. Uh, uh, truly, it's about being uh, empathetic to our team members, uh, also being available to our team members. Uh, during this time of COVID, the one thing that we've learned uh, with social distancing and safe hygiene practices for safety uh, was that people had personal needs. So they're not only looking for a job just for a paycheck, but they're looking for that employer to also care about them and their families. People had the loss of loved ones and uh, did not have an opportunity to publicly grieve uh, the stress of teaching your children from home. I've heard from countless parents uh, who are working from home and they have a child cameoing through their Zoom meetings, uh, making sure that the children have all the technology that they need, which you also need to be trained on so you can check Google Classrooms and all that great stuff. In government, uh, it was critical uh, at the end of March when the governor called for the state of emergency and a shutdown, we had to pivot from offices to remote locations, had to set up uh, electronic systems and platforms. And I mentioned in healthcare, we had to set up telehealth services where we're actually seeing a greater show rate of patients uh, via the telehealth method, 99% versus a 30% no-show because of the convenience of a safe, secure environment of their home uh, versus having to travel to a location in New Jersey traffic, good old New Jersey traffic. Uh, so truly, uh, in this time, uh, I'm excited about what our future looks like and getting recertifications and training is actually critical uh, to keep your skills current and also to help us with the new world and the new normal that we're now in. Thank you. We're still trying to figure out what the new normal is. <laughs> However, I think all three of you have mentioned about making sure that you talk to your employees and keep, you know, keep that personal relationship, which is critical. It's also needed when you're trying to figure out how you can help them figure out for their career in the future. Because not everyone is interested in a promotion at a certain time in their life. Different things happen. So if we're talking about how do we mentor our workers, is there something that we could do to improve how people are mentored? Is there a formula or is it an ad lib type of thing? Pat, what do you think? Well, I think it's important. Um, if we start with the premise that change is inevitable, and particularly during the COVID-19 um, pandemic, that change is, 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 is certainly around us at, at, at all levels. 
I think the importance of of continuous mentoring and providing for the opportunity for further professional training and education is absolutely critical. Um, and I think it starts by our public officials within those governmental areas encouraging it and providing the opportunity for it and allowing for in-house training with regard to it, as well as allowing and encouraging um, with uh, maybe some tuition credits, for example, uh, of the importance of going back to school and getting that degree, particularly at a time when many people might be confined to their homes to a certain extent from where they might have been before, where they can do it even online. Um, I think that's very, very important. I've also thought it was important to the extent it was available to do uh, to encourage young people for particular to, to intern in government to get uh, that beginning for that uh, importance of the, um, uh, of the the flavor of the importance of public sector service and service to the public. I think that's very important. We've always had interns. That's a mentoring thing that we always did for young people. I'm proud to say a number of them went on to do service in government. I think that's one way to do it. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Shavonda, what do you think? So uh, I, I agree that mentorship is is critical. In fact, I started my career um, and, and can attribute my career not only to good home training, but also to good members who uh, model the positions that of leadership that I wanted to serve in. Uh, additionally, making sure that we're available to them uh, and that there's opportunities for them to learn where they are. Uh, definitely online platforms, especially uh, in this time and season, uh, where people need to be in their homes for the different various of reasons uh, to be available. And FDU does provide that. When I did my graduate studies there, uh, it was convenient. Working mom, two small children, able to have a career as well as pursue my additional credentials. And even now, learning is ongoing, should be fun, especially in this new world. So uh, being sure to talk to people about what they're thinking about, staying in tune uh, with our employees, again, that relationship. What are their goals? What are they struggling with? And how we can help them to secure the training and education and technology supports that they need to be successful. Because there's nothing more frustrating than that Zoom conking out and thinking it's just a plug when, in fact, it's a Wi-Fi system that everybody's on at the same time in the neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you, Shavonda. Kevin, what would you like to add? Yeah, thank you. I, I agree with uh both affirmation uh, statements. I just wanted to add, uh, I would help the individuals with their individualized development plans and looking at COVID as an opportunity to develop a new skill and having the flexibility of FDU to have certification and also degree programs. This is a great opportunity for you to come out with a, a enhanced knowledge of learning because learning is a lifelong event and it should be fun. It is lifelong. I think we've gotten to the point where they, you can't just rest on your laurels and the skill sets that you had at one point. We have to continually look at how we can do better and do uh, learn new skills. And as Shavonda mentioned, the telemedicine, I, I can see definite advantages to that and how people have gravitated. People who would not have used technology are using that because they sort of had to and they've come to like it. So that's an interesting point. Um, what kind of advice would you give to your friends, colleagues, people who work for you about um, going to school, getting some training, uh, increasing their knowledge base, and so forth? Shavonda, do you want to respond? Sure. Um, again, it's it's lifelong, as, as Kevin mentioned, and, and Pat agrees with us. He's still teaching uh, and, and working with young people, and research, I'm sure, isn't required for that. Um, reading, uh, getting um, uh, the additional skills, uh, learning where you want to be in this time. Um, and, and I say that because as a mom of a 20-year-old and a 22-year-old, our kids are, are doing great. They're thriving. Uh, one's an undergrad, doing it virtually, doing fine. Uh, my daughter's in graduate school and working virtually, doing fine. They're resilient. Uh, so it's us who are used to the brick-and-mortar space right of, of learning and now learning is where you are which in some regards our, our grandparents taught us that it's an everyday experience and now that we can do it remotely and have access to top tier uh, educators 
uh, to either assist us with certifications for a specialty or either a course just to help us advance our skills. This is the time to do it while you have that space and, and figuring out what your next new self, new normal will be. Thank you. Thank you, Shabanda. Kevin. Uh, thank you. Uh, growing up, our parents used to always say it's better to have than not need and the need to not have. So whenever I was with the organization, I took advantage of, of a free ed education or whatever courses that they would pay for. And that's how I became acclimated to uh, FDU because the president of GPU, James Leva at the time, was a graduate from FDU. So he was my godfather for the lack of a better term. But since then, I mean, it, it grows and develops you and FDU offers those many avenues of flexibility to pursue our better you. So we wanna come out of COVID with a better you and I think uh, FDU is gonna help you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, do you have something to add? Yeah, I, I, I hardly agree with uh, Shivana and uh, and Kevin on, on what they've said about this. and. From my perspective, I think uh, as growing up, it was always thought that, uh, and my parents instilled in me, you, you went to high school, obviously you graduated, hopefully, and, and, and went on to college, and, and maybe if you did some school after that, but that was it, then you did your career, but that's not it. Um, what I have found and completely is that uh, education is lifelong, um, mainly to continue your skill sets and, and continue to keep up with the latest trends and technology and the things that are happening, particularly around us at the present time, and I think what I like to do is if I'm going to encourage people to do that, to go back to school, to continue their professionalization, then I need to be doing it myself. And I have taken the advantage of considerable amount of time. I'm listening to so many different types of podcasts, uh, watching so many different Zoom lectures uh, on different things that uh, brush up my skills as well as continue my lifelong curiosity about the things around us. And I encourage that to all of my students. Um, and fairly Dickinson University has given me the opportunity to do that, for which I am eternally grateful. And I think it can, is still continuing to do that for so many people around the state and beyond. And it can continue to do that for you today uh, by joining us, particularly at the School of Public and Global Affairs. Thank the panel for their great comments. If I, I have a couple of minutes, I'd like to um, summarize some of the things. One is lifelong learning is with us and it will be with us. And so we have to encourage people who we work with and who work for us to do something so that they're always current. And I relate, I, I would tell my staff, uh, it's important that you are always employable and not just employed, which means that you have to keep your skill sets current. You have to make sure you know what's happening. So I think all of us have been into the Zoom mode and Few of us had used Zoom before the lockdown and whatever happened. And so between that, the telemedicine, um, all these other innovations that have come about because of COVID, it's changed who we are and what we do. It's slowed us down some. It's made us have an appreciation for things that we can now learn on our own as well. So looking at podcasts, uh, looking at things online. You could take a course. And for people who are watching this, I would encourage them to get in touch with us and look, up, uh, look at our program offerings. Um, you can look at, uh, send us some inf uh, an inquiry at spga at fdu.edu. And um, hopefully we'll see you in classes. It'll help all of you uh, have a better feeling for who you are and Explore some of those things that you may not have been doing in the past. Um, so thank you for being here. Peter, would you like to say a closing remark? You did a great job. Everybody did a great job. And I hope we hear from some people who are going to be lifelong learners and pick up some credentials. And we'll be happy to talk about what programs might be best for your career. Thank you. Assemblywoman, Pat. Kevin. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay safe, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. It's a pleasure to have this group with us today, and we have some questions that we would uh, like to pose to the panel. Um, so the first question was, 
directed to our Assemblywoman Sumter, who's basically I'm going to read this. Um, thank you for all your hard work. We know that you've been very busy as well as uh, doing a lot of other things outside of the assembly work. And during this pandemic, a lot of things have changed for all of us. How do uh, people who work in government help to help advance people's careers given the situation that we're in? Oh, great, great question, Paulette. Uh, and and truly, uh, thank you for acknowledging the service that we're all doubling down in. Uh, we got a historic pandemic. Um, that's resurfacing as we speak. We're here virtually where we would have been in person in Atlantic City at the convention hall. Uh, so it really is a space for a true uh, public service because uh, it's really everyone taking care of their neighbors. Uh, getting trained up and skilled up, perfect time for that, uh, especially if you had a burning desire uh, to pursue a different uh, part of education. FDU is a good place for that and space for that, even certificate programs. Uh, we really had to tool up real fast on learning about the impacts of the pandemic. Um, my background is behavioral health, mental health, so it's important, and I've said this, uh, I think, throughout the video, uh, using technology, because we moved to a telehealth platform, uh, so getting skilled up in how to engage with technology, in fact, in mental health, where we had a 30% no-show rate, we now have 99% of patients showing up for appointments because they don't have to leave the comforts of their own home and they don't have to deal with Jersey traffic, right? So for professionals working in public service, uh, let's even look at how we're doing our public meetings in the legislature. We do it uh, via telephone or via Zoom. So again, being skilled in order to use this technology, breakout rooms, controlling the mic, right? All important spaces where continuing education can be extremely helpful during this time. Thank you so much. And I think that that sort of uh, reflects most of our positions right now that uh, uncertain what tomorrow is going to bring and we keep on trying to get our job done. Yes. Um, so, Pat, someone wanted to know from your background, <clears throat> how did you transition from law to public service and now into the academic world? And do you have any advice for somebody who's interested in doing something similar to that? Uh, Paula, thank you. Uh, I want to let go with my congratulations to Shivana, too, for the great work that she's been doing. And it's a, it's a delight to, again, be in a panel, sharing another panel with you. Uh, and I see Peter there too, and I'm delighted. Paulette, thank you for being the moderator. Um, I had always wanted to, from my earliest days, uh, we had a class, let me begin with this. We had a class when I was an eighth grader called uh, Occupations. Um, my, uh, my eighth grade teacher was Florence Dewey. She was a, a distant relative of Admiral George Dewey. Uh, and she would let you know that. Uh, but she also asked us to, at that time, consider what we would like to do when we became employable, or I guess when you grew up. My neighbor was an attorney, and um, I was talking to him one day about this, and he, he suggested something, you ought to think about this. So I, I, my hero at that time was Abraham Lincoln, still is, and I wrote this thing about Abraham Lincoln as a lawyer that I would like to be a lawyer. And I followed that path uh, through college into law school itself. But at the same time, as Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer who became a, a somewhat of a became a politician, I wanted to do the same thing. Um, and I was locked on by the election of 1960. I'm really dating myself now. Um, when I first saw that first debate and I said, geez, I'd love to do that, too. And so I kind of married the two together, being an attorney and looking to do something in public service. Um, being an attorney gave me the background to be able to stand on my feet and talk, um, hopefully intelligently. <laughs> to put an argument together, uh, to work with network with people, um, to argue. Um, public service fulfilled the desire I had to give back. Um, and so I started as a councilman. I, I, I started working on someone's campaign. That's how I started as a teenager. Um, and working on campaigns to the point where I was asked to run, um, to serve as a councilman, mayor, county exec, uh, uh, assembly person and county executive of Bergen County. And so, I, I found the two careers work together until county executive when you had to do that completely as a full-time position, which I did. Um, there came a point when before that I had decided that I also wanted to kind of give back in a, in a teaching role. I, 
friend of mine had been teaching as an adjunct uh, uh, in business law. I was doing law. I got an opportunity to do that. And that gave me the background, at least the foot in the door or getting, you know, acclimatized to academic life, even as short and as limited as it was. There came a point when I knew that I wanted to call it quits on public service. I knew that it was time to leave and give someone else a chance to do it. Um, and I made that decision. It was a hard decision. And, and, and at the same time, I was asked to take a position in a relatively new program at Fairleigh Dickinson University, uh, the Master's in Administrative Science. It was allied very closely to the governmental work that I was doing in public service, as well as law. There was a natural transition with regard to that. I've never looked back on it. It's been a great experience for me, and I, I'm very grateful to a number of different people who've given me that opportunity, including uh, Peter and Paulette here on, the, on, this, on this call. For, for, for you, that if you're thinking about doing this, I recommend if, if this is something you're interested in doing and you have a background significantly in the profession that you're in, I do recommend that you seek to find an adjunct position, a uh, full-time position is going to be really difficult right now, an adjunct position where you can see if you really like to do this. Right now, it's going to be a little bit difficult because there are very few in-person classes going on and everything is remote like we're doing this. Um, so that the fact of the matter is, um, it's something that you may have to wait until we get back into that period of time when you can do that in, a, in an in-person um, uh, uh, position. But if you have the desire uh, to give back knowledge um, and at the same time um, work with young people and, and, and people in college, for example, um, I think an adjunct position is a good way to start, get your foot in the, in the door, send out some resumes, keep checking uh, uh, the different things online with regard to openings on that. There are a number of colleges in the state, obviously. Fairleigh Dickinson, of course, is my favorite. Um, and um, and see what happens. But that's my recommendation on that. Thank you, Pat. One of the things I think that's kind of important is that they should try it out, basically, as if they're interested in teaching. Give it a shot. It may not be what they really want to do. Nope. And I sometimes tell the story. I tell stories in class and so on. And I tell the story about my son who got to work in a pizzeria one summer when he was a teenager. And that was the, de the deciding vote for him. He decided he was going to go to college. He didn't want to do manual labor. So it told him what he didn't want to do. <laughs> he wasn't sure what he wanted to do, but that point was pretty clear. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sometimes we make decisions and we're not sure if it's the right one for us, but it gives us an opportunity to find out what we like or don't like. Yeah. So. And again, this is not for everybody. And I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a question of, of, you know, trying it out and seeing if you're, if you fit um, and if it's the right thing for you, as well as the students who are, you know, most important in, in, in that type of relationship. All right. And we have uh, one question from someone who wanted to know, he has a, bachelor's degree from Fairleigh in business and management. And he uh, has an MBA in finance and is working in local government. And now he's interested in MPA degree um, and looking for information. So in general, if you want information on our MPA program, uh, you could email Christy, uh, Peter, me, Pat, any of us, and we can get you into the right place. So um, I'm, I'm sure the information would be available. Um, I, think I, guess other, well, I think the other good part about that is that right now when we're in a position where to a great extent, we're sort of kind of locked in place to a certain extent in, in, with certain limitations uh, because of the pandemic, it's a good time actually to think about um, brushing up your professional credentials through education, for example, um, and taking some courses. I know that's the kind of talking we're getting from, or the kind of inquiries we're getting from, from uh, folks who are trying to get into our program with that, uh, that it's, it's, you know, the winter's approaching. And as we can see for the foreseeable future, this is gonna be online now, at least till uh, probably mid, you know, mid March, April at the earliest. So it's a good time to do it. And, and anyone? Um, I'm sorry, if, if I can just chime in. Sure. Um, uh, Pat and Paulette, I think it goes back to something you said earlier um, of your eighth grade teacher who stuck with you that learning is eternal. Right. 
right? So, so we think when we get these credentials that we're done, uh, but no, the brain is forever working and the world is forever changing. Uh, so really taking this time to brush up on your skills of self-investment uh, is a big part of self-care and it keeps your brain from being stuck on watching the news and, and constantly watching uh, the surge in the pandemic. So it, it will help to actually de-stress you, uh, possibly looking at higher education, continuing education. Uh, but the other great thing about FDU, if I may, uh, is the advisors and the mentorship, especially for professionals. I did the executive MBA program, concentration in health systems management, but I also work with a cohort who helped direct my classwork uh, since uh, this individual has his uh, BS already, business management from FDU, uh, apparently very bright, got the fellowship for uh, the graduate work and now considered an MPA. And it may be some overlap of courses uh, that the advisors can actually talk them through because you also want to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. Another benefit of FDU and customizing programs uh, so that it's relevant to the life work you want to pursue. Yeah, very and good we point. did not pay you for that credit. We didn't pay you for that advertisement. Didn't pay me for that. <laughs> I, that was a very good, a very good, very good point. Uh, a couple of things. I just jump off that too, if I might. Um, the um, on the uh, the issue of lifelong learning, I think is imp uh, is really a good, very good point here that Fairleigh Dickens gives you the opportunity to, to fulfill. I remember when uh, I told the story to my own classes uh, that when I was going to college, you always get a book list, right? And it comes to the summer and I probably very few people actually read the books. But anyway, the one of the books I remember on there was The Education of Henry Adams. And um, I didn't read it at the time. I have to be I have to be uh, truthful about this. But later on, I did. And um, it's interesting that when I read the book the first time, I wasn't sure exactly what he, you know, the author was very acerbic, to be honest with you, and had a very, uh, you know, kind of looked down his nose on a number of different people. But the actual point of the book later on, as I thought about it, was that that um, education is lifelong because that's the point he actually makes, that there's never an end to education. And uh, that's why programs like uh, that Fairley has on the MPA or the MAS program or the Home Homeland Security programs, other certificate programs that we have are really good for that particular purpose. Um, and uh, um, if I might just tell a quick little story here, I think we have a few minutes here about Miss Dewey, if I might the poignant story about this in the legislature. Uh, later on in life, I, I always regarded Miss Dewey as giving me this, it was that great teacher that you have that kind of provides us some mentorship to you and puts you on the right road. And she did that for me. And then later on in life, my legislative office, when I was in the legislature, she had retired. They named the school after her. And um, I was, and my office was in the town that she lived in, in an apartment uh, the um, in Richfield Park. One day, some ladies showed up in my office and they said that, do you, Mr. Schubert, do you know Ms. Dewey, don't you? And I said, yes. I said, well, you know, she's having some difficulties. Um, maybe you could help her. To make long story short, she was running through some very significant difficulties health-wise, um, had nobody to turn to, and we were able to get help to her through the county at that particular time to help her out. I always felt that I was, this was a way I said, thank you, Ms. Dewey. Uh, as difficult as it was under those circumstances, how different thank you that I was able to say thank you to you in a different way uh, for what you did for me. Um, it's one of those, you, Shivani, you know how a service in the legislature has so many different things. Absolutely. That's her. one of those thankful moments you never knew you'd have the opportunity to do, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So well, let me give a plug right now. If anybody sure. is out there and wants information, uh, Christy Innes is our contact person. So you can get in touch with her at 201-692-2741. That's 201-692-2741 or INNES at FDU.edu. INNES at FDU.edu. That's another commercial break there for you. Um, so one of the things I think is interesting is the fact that uh, we all, as adults, many of us feel a little uh, apprehensive about going back to school. Um, so Pat, the students that you have, well, can you tell us something about their like ages or mm, experience? Yeah, I think uh, two things about this is that in our programs, particularly in the School of Public and Global Affairs, most of our 
uh, full-time professors and adjuncts are have come from different professional fields. So they've actually been in the fields that they're often teaching. So they bring not only academic credentials, but they also bring the professional credentials of having actually worked in the field, so to speak, in the areas that they're teaching. And I think that's an important thing for students to get that actual experience from professors, as well as the, as the important parts of the educational principles of that particular course. Um, the students that I have are, are what we would call lifelong learners. They're, most of them are employed in public service, police officers, government, nonprofits, some business folks. Um, that are looking for the brush up their credentials, their professional training, uh, their education credentials, um, and uh, for the purpose of promotions uh, along the way and things like that. Um, and so they're gainfully employed often, or they're trying to get a, a, maybe a better position that they have. Um, and our programs uh, basically are, are couched to make that happen or give them the opportunity to make that happen uh, education-wise. So I think... Uh, the uh, MAS program, the MPA program, uh, MSHS program, and others from the uh, School of Public and Global Affairs at Fairleigh are really meant for that particular purpose. Now, Shavonda, I know you have, besides your assemblywoman role, you have another role and you interact with a number of people. Can yeah. you tell us some advice uh, that you would give them about how they could progress in the organization? Sure. So uh, part of my other role is working in healthcare. Uh, and in these days, um, we're really working double time in all spaces, uh, considering the impacts of the pandemic, uh, let alone the anxiety and depression numbers that are up. I'm in behavioral health in particular. Uh, but also, if you look at the ancillary services like respiratory therapists and the like, uh, the one thing I want to go back to, you mentioned people being apprehensive about going back to school. Some call it unfinished business. And in this time, uh, really, we need to look at how we can uh, have more skilled workers uh, in the workplace, how they can help uh, create some of the new pathways of science and medicine and care pathways to take care of folks, because we don't know what the lasting impacts will be uh, from this pandemic. The other piece I'd like to state uh, is I was on a call this morning at 8 a.m. with the manufacturers uh, who for years we were trying to coach them at least 10 years in partnering with uh, community colleges and higher education to skill their workforce for smart manufacturing. We're in that space now where they've actually done that, uh, where it's not just working with your hands, but it's also using your brain to do things smarter. So again, as you think of, okay, can I go back to school now? Can I dust the cobwebs off? Truly, 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 it's a great time. Uh, and it's, it's flexible and fluid. Same thing applies for telehealth, which we're now in that space, which we were all scared of, didn't think people would dial in, we want to go to a physical location, but because of safety, you can't necessarily do that. So truly using technology and linkages and connecting with people, critical, critical now to stay connected as we're doing right here now. <laughs> One of the things I find I interesting. Think, part of that, Paulette, too, is, uh, as Shivana indicated, is the flexibility of our program and the fact that um, it's it, it can be crafted to meet the needs of the students that, that are seeking to better their education, number one. Number two, we offer it not only on campus, obviously right now it's all on, on it's all online, but it, it, it'll eventually go back and in local and, and in a number of different uh, uh, satellite locations around the state. Um, so we actually bring education to you um, along the way. And I think that's one of the things that Fairley has been able to um, kind of lead the way in and continues to do, I think, in many ways. Correct. One of the things I, I think is the fact that the classes span age groups. We have some who are right out of college who are taking master's level courses, and we have people who have retired from one job preparing for another, and then those people who have actually retired, retired, but want to keep their mind sharp. So it spans all age groups, and it's important to... Uh, recognize that when you're signing up for a class and you have young kids teaching old people things and old people teaching young kids things. It's a interesting uh, dynamics. Uh, one of the things is the fact that in any of our occupations, there may not be a direct path from where they are to where they want to go. So Javonda, can you uh, say a few things about what they should be looking for? 
Sure. Uh, and, and it's a great point of mentioning what the, what the class is made up of, because actually um, one of the things, how I got into healthcare administration was one of my classmates was actually in a hospital system, healthcare administration. And we talked through what that looked like. Um, and I, I took a shot and applied for a hospital healthcare administrator job. And it worked for me and my family at that time. Now I'm on the outpatient side and it works for me and my family at this time. So truly uh, having that uh, cross-generation in the classroom setting a lot and doing your project work together and talking through what's real world experience and real time and, and group projects helps to connect uh, the individual with invaluable experience that's not necessarily in the syllabus online or in the pamphlet uh, that one might hand out. Uh, and again, I can't say enough about the staff uh, because the staff is really engaging at FDU and connecting with the students. So it does have a personal feel even though it's a university uh, with a number of campuses and also remote learning. Uh, so truly you always can find someone to talk to, which is always critical when you're pursuing advanced degrees and certificate programs to make sure it's a good fit for you. I think the follow-up to that too, is that um, my experience, not only being a professor at, at Fairleigh, but with the other, my colleagues, um, is that we're always accessible. Um, by phone or email to with our students. Uh, this is even much more important now when we can't have, even have office hours anymore in the traditional sense. So I think our accessibility is an important aspect of this program. I think the second part of that too, and Shabanda indicated it too, which is the issue that the classroom setting that we utilize is, not, is a mixture of not only the academic aspect of a particular topic, but it also marries with it um, project-based, what we call project-based learning and where the students in a class will work around a project kind of promoting the concept of team interaction. Um, and I think that's one of the things that Dr. Woolley has uh, pioneered with regard to, I think, the School of Public and Global Affairs that we continue to do and build in our programs. So one of the other aspects that you mentioned, and we're almost at the end, is the networking. Mm. So it's really important to build your network to help you get ahead and making sure that you're always ready for the next opportunity that comes along. I think that uh, the points that you brought up are really good. And people who have tuned in to us today should know some of this information and check about going ahead and getting an additional degree. Um, maybe their first degree. We're not sure. Could be. <laughs> Could be. Never too late. Never, Never too late. late. <laughs> yes, we have... Uh, there's always the future. So thank you very much for attending and thanks for the panel. Thank you for having us.